Hey everyone, this is my brother Michael. My brother Adam. We're the Sharp Brothers. You're listening to Mentoring for the Modern Musician. Hey everyone. Hey, welcome back. Welcome, welcome back. back to the podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome to Mentoring, Mentoring for, for the, the Modern Musician. Musician. And today on the show... <laughs> oh, you, wow. You really want to skip right to it. I do. Okay. Well, we don't have as much time. Right. Because we, 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 have, we have many, many things to many, do. Many, many things. Yes. Crazy week. Crazy week. Uh, good things. But, yeah, oh, great things. But, but yes. Crazy week. So... Uh, it doesn't th- mean we're going to talk really fast. Thank you guys for being here. Oh, Let's start with that. Absolutely. And thank, thank you to all you, the new you. listeners. Exactly. Thank you guys for We listening. appreciate you. Make sure to like and share. We're trying to get this message out to everybody on yeah, the we planet. Are. Help all the musicians right. and creatives feel better, have a better world. Right. To get their hands out of their, you know, their head out of their hands and stop. Exactly. Woe is me. Stop crying. Right. Stop. It's okay. It's you okay. can stop crying. It's okay. We've been there. We've, we understand. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, the reason you're crying, you're probably right. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> but there's a way out. There's a way out to not feel there like crying all the time. There are way out. There, there are way there outs. There are way outs. No. 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 There's, no. No. There, there is many ways. There are many ways there out. There are many ways out. There you go. We English. <laughs> we English good. So today on the show, I'm kind of, I'm not excited. I know you are. I, I'm see, not excited. You're, I, it's, you're trying to contain it? It's not that I'm excited. It's Here it is. It's one of those things where if you've been saying something for a very long time and everybody looks at you like you're crazy and s- explains to you how you're wrong, and then that thing happens. It's it is a little bit. Uh, it's it's not. What's exciting. the word? Schadenfreude. <laughs> it's not really Schadenfreude because I'm not no. excited for no, anybody. It's not that excited. Suffers. It's and you don't. You, and here's the thing. We're not going to do a show about I told you so. Right. The, right. No. Right. But the you, name of this episode is not told you so. <laughs> but you do feel a little vindicated. Yes. Right. No. It's not even that. And, and vindication comes with a, just a, <laughs> a little bit of smugness. Yeah. Yeah. You, so I'm just, it's, just, it's almost no way to not I'm be a little smug. Trying not to be smug about it. Okay. So, iTunes is dead. Ding dong. <laughs> iTunes is dead. <laughs> like it or hate it, iTunes is dead. Absolutely. Yeah. We said on a show. It was about a year ago. About a year ago. Um. You know. Here's the thing, man. At some point. At some point in the near future. In the near future iTunes just isn't going to be there it's anymore. Gonna, it's not going to be people there. People were looking at us like we had just said, I don't know, the I, most outrageous thing that like, we're like it's, we're going to picnic on Mars, right? Or you know, like uh, no one's going to be using horse and buggies anymore. Exactly. You know, hey, I right? just bought fifty thousand horses. What? Or why would I want a phone without a cord on it? You yeah. know, I'd... like everybody's going to have a computer in their house. Oh. <laughs> Or like stupid things I've said in the past, like to my typing teacher in high school, <laughs> where I was dropping class. Oh, I promise I'll take typing again. Walking away, I thought to myself, almost said it out loud, like I'm ever going to need to type. Come on. <laughs> so occasionally I'm wrong as well. Lots. I you would know, say I'm wrong Hey, lots. I've been wrong today. About a lot of things. Since before we did this podcast. Exactly. But about the fact that iTunes was, was going to shut die, down. We were dead on. Absolutely. And it's part of what feels like, I think the reason that, I, again, excited is the wrong word, why I'm so interested in what's going on with this. Yes. Is that this is a continuing saga that you and I have been talking about. Yeah. And being on what felt like. Like we like we were on our own little island. The enemy side. Like yes. everybody hates us. Like everybody hates us. For talking. Because we're like, the, right. like here's the thing. The emperor is just not wearing There anything, are no guys. clothes. He's he doesn't have a new suit. He, no, he doesn't. This, I could totally see his ding dong. <laughs> and it's not pretty. <laughs> it's not a pretty sight. So <laughs> we kind of got to start back Napster at Napster. Absolutely. Okay, so this is the late nineties. Yes, ninety six. Uh, no, I think it was a little later. Ninety seven, maybe. Uh, and I don't remember how long Napster's run. I remember it ended in two thousand one. Is when right. they had to shut down. And I remember. Talking about it with other musicians at, at music least, conferences. At least ninety eight, ninety nine. I remember speaking about it at music conferences, where the musicians in the indie world were all pro Napster, sure, like getting Napster tattoos and like, right. oh, this is the best thing ever, man. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Music is good. it levels the playing field. I'm like, that's right. Nobody's getting paid now. Ooh. Nobody's getting paid. What? What? And it was hard to explain that part of it. 
Because what was being pushed was this is like marketing, and people are going to find your music and they're right. going to go buy your albums. I kid you not, you guys. I know that's what everybody was saying. They did. They said that. Guys. If you weren't around back then, what they were saying was they're going to find your music, and then and then they will buy. They'll oh no, they'll go out and find your music and buy it. Go to right. a record store to, and buy yeah. it. Right. It wasn't like you could go to iTunes because no. iTunes didn't exist. You couldn't go to Amazon. You couldn't go to Amazon. I mean, Amazon, no. Well, not not, not when not, Napster came out. No. Right? Amazon yeah. wasn't even there. There was. You couldn't go digitally buy something. So Right? So you had to go to a store. So the story went like this. The little fantasy story went like this. Okay. Enlighten. You know, people can get your music on Napster, and friends are going to share it with people, and they go, oh, my God, this is the coolest band ever. This is so important to me. I'm going to drop what I'm doing. I'm going to get in my car. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to deal with people. I'm going to find a parking spot. I'm right. going to so yeah. I took my parking spot. I'm going to find another parking spot. I'm going to walk <laughs> to the store. I'm going to hang out. I'm going to have to search where this thing is. And then they're going to go, oh, that's an indie band. We don't carry we that. We don't carry that. I'm going to get back in my car. I'm going to go to an indie bookstore, an right. indie music store. Right. Same thing yes. again. And then I'm going to buy that record and be so excited, right. not at all annoyed that I had to do all that stuff to find it. And Right. At no point during that traffic or someone taking my spot, am I going to change my mind about this artist that I've just heard one song from that I've never heard of from exactly. Indiana? And, and then they're going to become a super fan and come to my shows, and right. I'm going to get famous. And they all left that off at the end, but right. you knew that's what they meant. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to make a million dollars. I'm going to be famous. Then a major right. label's going to sign me, and I'm going to say no. Right. I'm going to stay indie. And so that was the fairy tale. That was the fairy tale. Right. And yours and my question to that little rampage would always be, yeah, but won't they just keep listening to the song for free on if they, Napster? If they got your one song for free, can't they just get anything you recorded for free? Why are they going to buy your record? Well, yeah, but but like you know, uh, you know they're a fan now. Okay, so that's not how it really works. But okay, and again, well, dispatch. Dispatch, dispatch. <laughs> right. So the band Dispatch, if you haven't heard of them, they're on Spotify now. You can you can go, you can go listen to them for free on Spotify. <laughs> they were this whole amazing band, and what happened was every right. Napster started in colleges, and every right. college campus in the world mm -hmm. decided that Dispatch was a cool band, and right. they are a cool band. Yeah, they're very unique and, and very. have a very cool vibe, and the guys are very cool. Right. And and but everybody was going to be Dispatch that and was sell out the you know. So Dispatch the, started selling out shows all over the country, and nobody right. knew who they were. And yeah. you know, the last one of the last shows I heard about them, they sold out Madison Square Madison Garden, Square Garden, two nights in a yeah. row. And, I it was three, and, but, and they beca they really did become a huge they thing. Were huge. And they were talented, are talented, are, right? Exactly, and, are huge, and the, deserved the cred. And that's sure. what everybody thought was going to happen with everybody. That's right. It's going to be happen for everybody. That was the outlier. That wasn't. That was right. the exception. That wasn't right. the rule. And so. What what our argument and it, it, it's so funny again just laying this out, it sounds like we must be lying, right? Like we're making this up. Like we're making it up. I swear to you guys. But our argument was, no one is going to buy your music anymore when they can get it for free. It was sort of a variation on the, you know. How are they going to buy the cow if you keep <laughs> giving the milk, milk away? For, right, exactly. Or, you know, buy the almond tree if you and, keep... And for some reason that confused us no end, nobody wanted to think about that end of it. No. And I remember you coming back from teaching this is sweet. You oh, had one student, student who they were so wealthy that you actually went to their house. Yeah, because they wanted me to, to teach. come. They, and I was like, nah, you know, it's going to cost you X amount of dollars to get me there. They're like, great. Okay. I was like, oh, I'm like, oh I should have said But more. it was cool. And it right. was a really nice family. And I would go, you know, teach this kid guitar. Right. And well, not just him. And the you, neighbor bass and his dad right. guitar. And <laughs> right. So it was cool. Was, yeah. And it was like a little thing I did, right? Right. And um, at one point. I just want to mention again, you had you went to their house. Because they offered you so much money to teach at their house, I couldn't which say you no. do not do, have never done. Never. But they offered you so much money that— And this is important to the story because— It matters. we got to understand how, much, how comfortable they were and how easy money came to them. Right. They, or how easy money was for them to— For their in their life. It was in not their, an right. issue in it's their life. not an life. issue at all. So this kid, 14— so clearly not musicians. Had plenty. <laughs> had not famous musicians. Right, had, exactly. Had plenty of disposable yes. access to cash. And uh, the the friend was leaving, and he's like, oh, hey, that new 
band's blah, 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 band record came out. I'm going to go buy it. And the kid looks at him, looks at his friend and goes, dude, I just bought that record. Why would you buy it? Just rip mine. Why would you ever pay for music? You can get it for free. And it was like, it was like it <laughs> echoed, it echoed in my head. Why would you ever pay for music, music, music Well, music, right. And music. you called me on the way back. I was like, dude. From that. It's over, man. Yeah. We are well, raising. No, you didn't call me on the way back because we didn't have cell phones. We didn't yet. have cell phones yet. You this is only when you got home. And I said from your landline. Right. And, and I said, look. And I picked it up. We are about to see a generation of people who are raised not seeing a, a monetary, monetary value exactly in the art of music recording right. and recorded records. Exactly. Right. Like exactly. And we talked about it the next. We were like, oh man. This right. is like okay. So then, you know, Napster goes away. So Napster. So everybody else decides it's a terrible idea that they're stealing intellectual property, right? Which they were, right? And nobody was getting paid for it, right? So they close it down in two thousand one. And in January of two thousand one, Steve Jobs gives a talk. And who's, this, who's this Steve Jobs fellow <laughs> from Apple? Uh, oh, from, oh yeah, from I, Mac. I remember him. And they fired him a few years before that. Because he wanted to take them down a road that they didn't think they could do. They didn't think they could compete with PC. Right. You guys remember PCs? <laughs> <laughs> and they had their big, you know, their big, uh, I think it was Zoom yes. was their platform. Right. But Steve Jobs decided that what was going to happen in the next 10 to 15 years was that there was going to, these digital devices were going to become a digital hub in your life. Right. Right? And that we would do everything digitally. You'd have digital communities. You'd be able to watch things on your on your little portable device. Well, on your lap on, but on your desktop. Right. And then you could sync it with your portable device. And just take it with you. And remember the iPod didn't come out for another nine months. Right. At the end of two thousand one. Right. Right. So there didn't even exist yet. And forget about iPhones or right. the idea. Not, of, there was not a thing. Nothing like that. No smartphones. And he, But he had that planned out, and this was his agreement to come back to Apple was that they had to let right. him go down this road. Yes. So he gave this big speech about this is what we're going to do. Right. That's going to be a digital lifestyle brand. And it would be convenient for everybody. Right. Nobody's going to the store. You don't have to go to the store you anymore to, to – right? You don't, you don't have to – you you want to talk to people who are like you. You could talk to people all over the world, right? That are like you, and we're going to do it in these, you know, chat rooms, and little communities, right? And right? Exactly. And one of the things that we're going to bring you is your entertainment, right? And right. that sort of was the beginning of the whole iTunes, idea, exactly. Right. That it was all about noticing. Steve Jobs noticed that where society was continuously going over the yes. last fifty years is towards convenience. Now, convenience, convenience, convenience. Don't take this as if Michael and I are saying we are part of the church of Steve Jobs. No, not Steve at all. Steve Jobs was also an amazing dick. <laughs> so, yes, he was. You know, absolutely. Like, didn't support and his ex did, wife and his kid. And he I mean, completely like, stole the operating system. Right, right. Right out from, from under. Um, or was it the other way around? No. Nah, I think it was the other way around. It was the other way around. That's all right. He stole other stuff. He from, stole other from stuff. PC. They stole stuff from each other. There was no. They doubt. inspired each other. <laughs> There's no doubt Steve Jobs was a dick. Yeah, exactly. That's a bumper sticker everybody can get behind, right? <laughs> uh, but it was an amazing visionary. Had this, Steve Jobs was behind you, so. had, had this, had this, uh, this vision for what what was going to happen, and that sort of iTunes sprung out of that. Right. All right. So the problem with iTunes is it was awful. It was well, just well, a horrible, horrible right. idea. It, it just. I mean, no, no, it was a great idea. It was a great, great idea. idea. That just never felt – you know how Macs – and maybe PC few people feel differently about this. But for me, the reason I switched to Mac was it just always felt like – If I didn't know what to do – A that was well-tuned up. Yeah, well, it's not just that. It also felt to me like if I didn't know what to do, I could kind of intuit it Yes. without any instruction. Well, and for creative things, so like for recording – you yeah. know, I don't know anything about the inside of my Mac <laughs> and for, for my recording studio. And I knew everything about the inside of how to reset my BIOS on, on right. my on my PC because I had to because I had right. to just do surgery on it Working every week. All the time. Whereas with the Mac, you know, you just turn it on and if it gets weird, you shut it off. You shut it, it off, turn it back on. It's fine. So and the, need a little nap. And so part of their nap. deal, part of that 
lifestyle thing, like it or hate it, is that the user experience, the UI, if you will, or the UX, <laughs> the user interface, not the user yeah. interface, but the user interface and the user experience is pleasant and right. intuitive. Right. Right? And and especially desktop iTunes never felt that way. It was just like... The iPod was kind of intuitive, the way you would want it to be. Sure. It had it arranged in a library. You could do it with genre. You could, right? right? But the, 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 the desktop version of iTunes always felt like me... If I were wearing size 14 shoes, <laughs> where I could still walk, but I'm going to be like plop, 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 be a little, tripping like around. A clown. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> not, not, uh, not, not smooth. Yeah, you know, not cool. Not which cool. Which is what everything else not about cool. Right. Which is what everything else about Mac and Apple was was cool. Exactly. Right. If you think back to those Mac PC commercials, oh, right. right? The Mac guy was cool. It's a cool little hipster, and the, and the PC, PC guy, guy was, was, you know, you know, he was your IT guy. Right. Right. You know. Right. From then, from that, right. from that period exactly. of time, um, and so the the iTunes having its pending death, right? I didn't see that early. I thought yeah. it was going to be in charge of everything, right? Because you could now buy a single without going anywhere. Yeah. Initially, it was a good split with the artists, right? Artists got a third. Right. Although the 80% were they still charged breakage. Right. And so and damage. Quick history in, in old record contracts, uh, artists would get 80% of what they sold. <laughs> so if you sold a hundred thousand records, they would pay you for eighty thousand records. Why? Because it was the record industry and they could. But what they, they said was, well, you know, there's gonna be defective material and people are gonna steal records. And that's gonna come from somewhere. Be damaged. And I'm like, and you know, so it's going to come out of the artist. And the artist couldn't Cut. go. Uh, so you wouldn't like take that out of the manufacturer or the store fee? <laughs> it's my fault. Okay, whatever. So they would pay you for eighty percent. Just a way to say you're getting a dollar record. Well, not really. You're getting eighty. You're cents getting eighty seconds. Right. But so initially, record labels Did in this... their deals for the digital downloads were paying artists eighty percent for shrinkage, shrinkage, and defective material. Right. Kind of brilliant. Maniacal, maniacal, evil, but brilliant. Well, record industry. There you go. Maniacal, <laughs> evil, <laughs> but brilliant. Exactly. And joyous, happy to be part of it. Absolutely. <laughs> happy to be part of the always. scene. Just always, always, happy, always, to be, always happy, happy to be at the party. Happy to be at the party. <laughs> I'm glad I got the invite. Thanks, guys. Exactly. Um, so, so where's my swag bag? Where's my? <laughs> oh, is this my tag? Cool. Where's the first? Uh, where's the first meeting? <laughs> Great. That's sweet. So so anyway, iTunes, right? right? So we started talking about this because what was happening was with the in d the introduction of yeah. streaming, right? All right. So yeah. So Pandora, right? When Pandora comes out, it's very cool. But one of one of the things that that you and I commented on immediately, and I'm sure uh, thousands of people commented on absolutely, immediately, was I can't just find the song I want, right? With Pandora, right? I mean, I loved Pandora. I eventually, found all kinds of eventually. The song will come up. Right. Right. If I put in the artist that I want to listen to, I want to listen to, you know, the Wallflowers. Right. 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 Eventually, that song that I wanted to listen to will come up. Now, what's funny is some of the bands that I found, I found in Pandora. I still do. Um, I love that. From their, you know, what are they Their algorithm. It? Their algorithm where yeah. you put in a song or a band and it creates a playlist. And, Absolutely. And it was like a, a custom made radio station. Mm hmm and I remember thinking, this is great. I'm finding new music. And I was in that mindset. Like, I didn't – it was okay with me that I couldn't just hear whatever I wanted right. well, whenever because, I wanted. Because we grew up in an age Play where – Play Brickhouse now! <laughs> well, we grew up in an era where you call a radio station and request a song, and you might hear it in two hours. But you would just sit but by you, the radio. You might not. You just sit by the radio. It's like going to those – With your tape player. <laughs> exactly. Ready to record. Your, your little Panasonic little tape player. <laughs> ready to record – from the speaker of this the speaker, mono right, radio, right. and then your and then your you're, mom would go, "Dinner's ready." Oh, mom, I'm making a mixtape. <laughs> so, you know, we we were willing to put up with it a little bit more. We totally but, were. But if you're if you're that kid who goes, "Why would I ever pay for music, man?" Right. Why I don't want to listen to that. You're not going to flower song. I want to listen to this one. We've created right. So then Spotify this, comes out. Yeah. Right, and immediately. I don't remember how soon it was, but it was very quickly. I remember sitting, oh, dude, talking to you and going, "Hey, dude, have you tried Spotify yet?" I know. And 
And I was, I was like, eh, I don't know, man. It and took I was me like, like six weeks of you just going. And to I was you like, gotta, you gotta I, try Spotify. I, I'm telling you right now, iTunes is done. Yeah. Oh, totally. <laughs> and this was whenever Spotify came out. <laughs> I'm like, it's done. People are not going to pay for music at all anymore, including digitally. Because they, it was more convenient to buy everything online. Which yes. was genius and brilliant. Yes, you could buy, the, you know, and you still got liner notes, and you still got totally, right? yeah. But then the minute Spotify comes out, yes. I'm like, why? Yes. Nobody's ever gonna buy music again. They're just gonna pay their monthly fee, right? And get all the music. All right, now I'm gonna jump in for anybody whose head is about to explode. Yeah, sorry. Who wants to say, but what about the artist? Right. The, the artist isn't getting. The artist was getting paid, and and now without right. iTunes. The artist isn't getting paid for that each that song. Now people will they'll get fractions of a penny. Right. And you're right. Yeah. Yeah. That's drag. You're totally right. And and it was a drag. I'm I, I'm not psyched that I oh no. that that I happen to be one of the people who noticed it. Uh, no. or that we called Which, this early on, or that Napster was in like I'm not neither none neither one of us are celebrating this. None. But 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 we're also not going to be actively in denial about a reality right. of the industry or of life ever. That's right. not what I plan to do. Right. We don't wash our clothes in a rock anymore either. Right. <laughs> How are you doing with that round thing and <laughs> hooking it up to I carry mean, those logs across the... Right. It's, it, you know, I'm also... Wheels are a good idea. Fire <laughs> exactly. has been very helpful for us as a species. It's, it's been pretty great, you know. Species? And, a species. Species. A species. It's, I think it's plural. Okay. Okay. I believe. Yeah, I, I do believe. Okay. There's more than we'll one of us, out. so hey. I think it's plural. And we'd be willing to be wrong about that. Absolutely. Neither one of us has an English <laughs> degree. You can feel free to correct us in the notes. Not yet, anyway. That's, That's right. <laughs> I don't see it happening for me, man. I'm, I don't either, but you never hey, know. Hey, you never know. You never right. know I didn't call Spotify in 1992 <laughs> either, so you don't know. Right. Exactly. But so, no, you're right. It It is brutal on artists, yeah. which is one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast. Right. Because I don't, we've we don't, been saying to you guys, right. you cannot depend on selling your music right. as a big part of your income. Right. If you're an indie band, you will sell CDs oh, at shows. Absolutely. You will sell vinyl. You're going to sell vinyl right? at shows. You might sell vinyl through your mailing list. You might sell vinyl at a store. You just won't sell it on iTunes. And it's not going to be enough to buy a boat. Right. Probably. Yeah. It, and if it unless is— you, Look, unless you're Ed Sheeran, which is awesome. And if it is— Awesome. We're psyched for you. We're always going to be psyched for artists doing well. We're always going to be psyched for bands doing well. We're always going to be psyched for indie labels or major labels doing well. Uh, We're always going to be excited for people doing well with the music industry. Mm -hmm. But the reality of where we are now is iTunes is dead. Right. And let that sink in. That's a really, really important thing for you guys to know. Yeah. iTunes is dead. Right. Now, we, you know, we've, since we started this show, we've been talking about, you know, banging the drum of, you know, traditional CD sales are done. Yeah. And very soon into doing this show, we said, hey, iTunes is following that. Yeah. People are not going to pay for music that way anymore. They will still pay through a subscription service. Yep. For the most part. And if you get millions of streams. Yeah. If you get hundreds of millions of streams, there's there's some interesting and very useful Oh yeah, money in there for Absolutely. you. Absolutely, sustainable. Right? But remember that getting millions of streams, really, what what's more important to be thinking about is how that's going to help your tour. Yeah, right. How that's going to help you connect with the with fan the fans base that's going to that that are that are going to support you as an artist that are, that you connect with. Right. And as an artist, it's going to be important for you to understand what your value is, who you are, what your strengths and weaknesses are. Yeah. And start finding your tribe. Right. Your your big family, your right. group of people that when they hear your music, their lives feel better. Exactly. And connecting with them. And you need to stop reading books that were put out in 2004 <laughs> about how to have a successful music yeah, career. Or 2010, man. Yeah. Because right. – It's not like that anymore. Don't watch the new Motley Crue documentary. And think that's going to happen think, for oh, you. This is what I'm going to do. That's what I got to do. Because it isn't. Right? That's not you, – you're right. not going to watch I – and mean, I guess you could watch The Newest Star is Born. I suppose that could still happen. I Probably not, though. It's it's not very likely. You know? You might – look, you actually might get on American America's Got Talent. You might get on yeah. uh, um, uh, American Idol. Sure. You know, we had Lindsay Rush on the show who's a talent coordinator for mm -hmm. both of those shows, mm -hmm. and that actually happens. It absolutely does. She does find people. Yeah. 
and and that can lead to a to a prosperous career. But you, no matter where you are, you still have to understand exposure like that. Even if you do well, even if you were to win, that's not a career. Mm-hmm. That's exposure. That's right. An that's, introduction. That's, that's it, an opportunity. It's a, it's a leg up. Yeah, and what you, the way you're going to have a sustainable career is the same as it always has been. For sure. Which is have music that speaks to people that mm-hmm. has value. Right. And then service that audience. Right. Right? Yeah. Touring mm-hmm. and now social media and mm-hmm. interacting with fans and meet and greets yeah. and quality art. Man. Yeah. Well, and when you, you know. Be and, really good at your craft. And when you do start to build that fan base, you know, do have CDs with you. Yes. Do have vinyl with you. Do have T-shirts. Do have coffee mugs. Because you know what they can't download? T-shirts. Right. You know what they can't download? Yet. <laughs> t-shirts. <laughs> mugs and right. posters. Not without a good and, 3D printer. <laughs> right. And lyric sheets and right. your set list from that show that gets auctioned off. And, and your handshake. And your handshake and a live show. And and you smiling at them and laughing with them when they say that they loved that song of yours. Yeah. And and those personal interactions, the experience, the experience is not downloadable. And part of that experience might be your physical CD or your vinyl mm-hmm. that you sign and they take a picture with you. Right. And and that's great. And yeah. that's part of it, but that isn't enough to count on paying your rent. Right. That isn't enough to count on you being able to buy food right. and upgrade your yeah. gear and exactly do you know what I mean? Yes. Take a couple of days off once in a while so yeah. you can have something to tell people about, right? Right. Like it's a it's a it's a more interactive world now, and yeah. and your job as a musician has just gotten more interactive. Right. There's more communication necessary, and not less. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And the idea. And and I know that we've gone a little far afield here with that, but we're not here to celebrate that iTunes is dead. Not at all. But it is. We do want to talk, remind you guys that the idea of making, you know, of selling five million records or five hundred thousand records or a hundred thousand records is is a really. It's a. It's not going to help you out in getting you to achieve the goal that you want to get. And know that if you do hit any of those numbers... We will celebrate. Man, will we celebrate with you. We will celebrate with you. Please let us know. Absolutely. We would love to meet you somewhere backstage (laughs) at a show because you're obviously at a show if you're selling that kind of... And we'll do a podcast with you and figure out how brilliant you are and how you did it. Yeah. We would love that for you. Downloading music that way is is gone. Yeah. It's not going to happen anymore. Yes. Right? Just like, you know... There aren't telephones with cords anymore unless people are being ironic. Yeah, you know no, exactly. And you know, there's a zillion television stations. Yeah, and you can listen and you can watch any movie that you want, whenever you want. Yeah, right. You can listen to any song now, whenever you want. And if you're looking around, if you've been paying attention for the last fifteen or twenty years, it's you know the same that we were talking about this the other day that when we were touring in the Early nineties, mid nineties, there were places where if we ran out of gas, <laughs> we could. That was it. We were we going to freeze to death. We were going to freeze to death. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And, we were going to Woody Guthrie. It. That's what was going to happen. That's, <laughs> and that's and that's not the case now. When no. there's you know, hey, look, <laughs> there's a Cumbies. I'll use my app. You, you know it's, what I mean? There's it's Mobile Canada. Mart. There's Irving. Right. Exactly. Like, like like pulling off the highway. Lots of the towns have the similar stores, and, I, and we're not going to get into an argument about whether right. or not that's good exactly. or bad. That right. is just what is going on. It's that's, just what it is. That's what it is now. Right. And understanding that that's the case is going to help you in your day to day. Right. And with your career, you need to be vigilant, man. You, yeah, you got to be. You got to be nimble. You got to. You you really really want to remember that whatever is working for you today may not always work for you. Yeah. Right, and some of that hard work and that hustle and that drive that people are always talking about mm-hmm. needs to be intellectual, yeah, and emotional, yeah. You need well, to figure and, out. And you got to be observant. Be observant, or have someone on your team that's observant for you, and if that you're touring, you believe that you trust. If you're touring, you know you got time. 
because when you're driving, you got nothing but time to think, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So these are the times to yeah. think and contemplate, who am I? What do I want from this? What's my value? What's, yeah. What can I do that is going to make bring me joy that's also going to bring my audience joy that's going to make me feel like – Exactly. I'm doing it right. Yeah. And like I'm, I'm having a good, successful career. Yeah. Well, and, and as with most things in life, you know, nothing stays the same. Exactly right. It, it's either going to get better or it's going to get worse. Right. Right. And the way to make sure that it gets better for you is to keep paying attention to what you see. Yeah. Have people around you who, you know, <laughs> if you don't have any teenagers in your life, get some. Get some. Because they'll let you know what the next new you thing got, is. That... You got a neighbor that's got kids. You got <laughs> exactly. you got nephews and nieces. You got yep. you know siblings that got kids. Whatever. Pay, pay attention. Pay attention to what they're doing because they're always going to be the early adapters. Absolutely. Right. And and if you start noticing that, it is a little bit like paying attention to trends. It is. And that's important. It is because we don't know what's next. No. What Not is yet. next? Right. Not yet. We'll we'll know eventually, but I can guarantee you something. We will be telling you what we think is next. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll be sharing with you our Pulling observations. Pulling no punches, baby. Pulling no punches, trying to find a way to flip it around so it's a positive and useful yeah. thing for you guys. We're going to keep bringing it to you for a positive narrative. Yeah, absolutely. Make keep it, it upbeat. 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 That's what we're all about. Exactly. Positivity. So remember, you guys, you got this. We got your back. We got your back.